The AI upturn is real, and I don't know when or where it is going to stop. Yes, we saw the letter getting co-signed and everything, but the last day, while I was doing some research, I ended up baffled by the fact that mind-reading AI is being developed. For breaking this story, I'm going to take you to Japan. So, fasten your seatbelts and come along. To kickstart the discussion, allow me to establish the fact that mind-reading AI is not a new phenomenon. In fact, it can be tracked back to the earliest days of human history. As we journey back in time, we discover that the concept has appeared in ancient mythologies, religious texts, and philosophical discussions. For centuries, humans have pondered the possibility of knowing another's thoughts, giving birth to stories of seers and mystical beings with such abilities. With the dawn of the 20th century started a new era. The advent of modern psychology helped scientists to explore the human mind more systematically. New theories and discoveries fueled the dream of decoding the human brain. During the same era, 1921 to be precise, the world was introduced to a device called the lie detector or polygraph. John Augustus Larson, a medical student and police officer, came up with this revolutionary device that changed the landscape of criminal investigations and employment screenings forever. Now, don't get me wrong, lie detectors were not an AI system. Rather, it recorded several physiological parameters, including blood pressure, pulse, respiration, and skin conductivity. These parameters can change when someone lies, as lying can trigger a stress response in the body. The device then compares these parameters to some set of standards to give a final verdict. Why this device is not considered as an AI is because it doesn't have the ability to learn or think like an AI system. However, it was the first real take on using technology for apprehending someone's mind. Fun fact, the infamous Bob Lazar, whose claim to fame is his supposed work on re-engineering a UFO at Area 51, has passed lie detector tests. So we keep the accuracy of lie detectors and the truth about Lazar topics for some other day, 102 years later or in present. As I said earlier, a couple of articles from reputed sources made me decide that I'm going to take you guys to Japan to discuss what is currently going on. Yu Tagaki, a 34-year-old neuroscientist and assistant professor at Osaka University of Japan, claimed that he couldn't believe what was happening when he first saw an AI reading a human brain and decoding those as actual pictures. He adds, I still remember when I saw the first images. I went into the bathroom and looked at myself in the mirror and saw my face and thought, okay, that's normal. Maybe I'm not going crazy. Tagaki and his team used a computer program called Stable Diffusion to study the brain scans of participants who viewed thousands of pictures while sitting in an MRI machine. Tagaki and his research partner Nishimoto managed to create a method to convert the brain activity into a form that can be understood. What could be more understandable than pictures? Using this technique, Stable Diffusion was able to produce pictures that closely resemble the originals, without being trained or given any information beforehand. Now, you must be wondering that, in our brain, thousands of processes are carried out every second. So how is this device producing viable results? Well, somehow they managed to detect and analyze the most focused signals of the brain, by which I mean they subject the person to a set of data first to an extent that it becomes the most centered thought in the brain. Around 10,000 images in the span of 40 hours are shown to the subject during the process to strengthen a particular thought for appropriate reconstruction. Now, let's talk about the precision. Tagaki claimed that initially, he and his team believed that these signals could be decoded in form of binary pixels or shapes. But human brains don't work like that. They are far more complex than anyone could imagine. When it comes to visual information, our brain processes it in a hierarchical manner which means it breaks it down into various levels of features or components with different levels of complexity. Thankfully, they were aided with new AI techniques to detect objects instead of just relying on binary pixels. The research team conducted an experiment that lasted for a period of 10 months. During this time, three subjects were shown a variety of images, ranging from natural photographs of animals and humans to artificial geometric shapes and letters of the alphabet. These images were presented for different lengths of time to the participants. In some cases, the brain activity of the participants was measured while they were looking at one of the 25 images. In other cases, the activity was recorded later when the participants were asked to remember the image they had previously seen. After scanning the brain activity, they decoded the information and created visual representations of what the participants were thinking about. But is that it? Are humans finally equipped enough to read brains? The simple answer to that is no. Let me tell you why. In the case of Tagaki and his team, they met two bottlenecks. Firstly, the current methods of recording brain activity involve using electrical pathways to transfer the signal. Unfortunately, 
these pathways are prone to interference from electrical noises present in the surroundings. This interference can significantly disrupt the sensitivity of the recordings, making it difficult to obtain accurate signals from the targeted region with high precision. Achieving this feat remains a challenge for researchers in the field. And secondly, the AI itself is not mature enough to create an MVP. At present, the technique cannot be applied to new individuals. Due to variations in brain structure among people, a model designed for one person cannot be directly utilized for another. Now let's pack our suitcases and come back to the USA, because here the biological father of AI revolution, Elon Musk, is also trying to read minds. His company Neuralink in the last seven years has been working on a special computer chip. This chip is meant to be put inside the brain, where it can watch what thousands of brain cells do. This chip is called a brain-computer interface, or a BCI. It has a very small part with over 3,000 tiny pieces connected to very thin and bendy wires, even thinner than a hair. In theory, all of this technology would let us get information and memories from deep inside our minds, like in the 1999 movie The Matrix. Musk also wants to use this technology to help people who can't see or move. But he has bigger dreams too. He wants to use Neuralink to let people talk to each other without speaking, which he thinks could help us win a battle against smart machines. He also wants to use this technology to give people supervision. In a groundbreaking demonstration, Neuralink presented a captivating video featuring a primate engaged in an activity that seems to defy the boundaries of science. As the camera rolls, we bear witness to a monkey skillfully playing ping pong, a feat that is nothing short of extraordinary. The monkey had been equipped with Neuralink's brain-computer interface that bridged the gap between the brain and the digital world for the primate. By translating the monkey's neural activity into computer commands, he or she was able to manipulate the viral ping-pong paddle with impressive accuracy and finesse. The framework developed by Tagaki and Nishimoto has the potential to be employed with various brain scanning devices, not limited to MRI. This includes EEG and even highly invasive technologies such as the brain-computer implants that Elon Musk's Neuralink is working on. This would take things to a whole new level. Now, allow me to say that all this tech sounds very perky, but that is only one side of the story. The other side of the story is darker than any one of us can imagine. We need to roadmap the implications that arise when privacy violations involve individuals' innermost thoughts. Not only that, but how can we guarantee that limited access to this technology does not intensify social inequality? What are the ramifications when such information can be directly fed into our minds? The research conducted by Tagaki and Nishimoto also created quite a stir within the technology community, a sector already invigorated by rapid advancements in AI, such as the introduction of ChatGPT, which generates human-like dialogue based on user prompts. Their publication, which outlines the findings, is among the top 1% in terms of engagement when compared to over 23 million research outputs monitored so far. As stated by data firm Altmetric, Tagaki himself claimed, I'm optimistic for AI, but I'm not optimistic for brain technology. Another critical issue is the equitable distribution of brain reading technology. How can we ensure that such innovations do not further widen the gap between the privileged and the marginalized, exacerbating social inequalities and perpetuating a digital divide? Could these tools be employed for mass surveillance, discrimination, or even thought control, eroding the very foundations of individual freedom and democracy? To deal with the complex ethical dilemmas that arise at the intersection of neuroscience and society, experts need to work on neuroethics at quite the same pace as they are working on developing these technologies. At this point, we can only hope that this technology is used for a greater good and welfare, like Elon Musk claims. Do hit the subscribe button because I carry out a lot of research to factfully bring all the latest and greatest blues from the world of technology. I've made a very interesting video on why experts from around the globe co-signed a letter to pause further development on AI. Make sure to check that out. I'll catch you there. Goodbye.